Wow, I'm so excited to be here. I mean, honestly, I was surprised when I was invited to speak to the plant people about the medicine wheel. I kind of went, medicine wheel, plant people, hmm. But I think we can tie it all in together before we're done. Um, how many of you are familiar with the medicine wheel, with the teachings of the medicine wheel, and, and have an understanding of it? Wonderful, wonderful. So um, for those of you who are, who are not familiar with it, the medicine wheel itself is usually constructed of stones, um, sometimes bones, sometimes other objects, but mostly stones. Um, and it is a physical representation of the entire cosmos, of everything that we can experience, of everything in this world, in this creation, and beyond. And so the medicine wheel that I work with is a 36 stone medicine wheel. It has 36 points on it. And um, I was trying to figure out how I was going to explain all of this without, usually I make a medicine wheel. Well, I couldn't get 36 stones here with me. I couldn't get it in the luggage to come here. So I did ask for this. So I'm going to ask you all to bear with me as I, you know, start to draw and talk about it. Um, <laughs> but I think that this is going to be a really good way for you to get an idea of how this works. But, you know, I want to explain just a little bit because, you know, the medicine wheel, Native Americans are not the only ones who use the medicine wheel. Most indigenous cultures around the world have had some form of wheel shape, usually constructed of stones, that connect them with the world, with our planet, and with other planets. Stonehenge is a medicine wheel. You know, I haven't been to Adam's calendar, but I believe that it probably is a medicine wheel. And, you know, different tribes, even different North American, Native American tribes, have slightly different medicine wheels depending on where they're located, you know, the configuration of where they are on the planet to the stars, um, where they are on the planet with what animals are around them, what plants are around them. So each medicine wheel for each tribe would be similar but still unique to their own tribe. So the one that I work with um, is from the Haudenosaunee tribe. Um, Haudenosaunee, you might be familiar with their um, name that they were given by the white people who came in, but they're, we, most people call them the Iroquois. So you're probably familiar with that, but that's a French word. And so the Haudenosaunee, of course, you know, that was not what they called themselves, but that's what we know them as now. Um, but it's a 36 point medicine wheel. Um, and you know, I know you all are familiar with a compass, right? You know, and usually we look at a compass and it's north, south, east, and west. So on the medicine wheel, we always start in the east. The east is that place of the sunrise and new beginnings. So when you look at a medicine wheel, when you look at a drawing of the medicine wheel, east is gonna be on the bottom, not the south. Like, you know, the, the compass that you use to navigate because that's not what a medicine wheel is for. It doesn't navigate, you know, in the world. It tells you about the world. So um, let's see if we can pull this off. So the first point on the medicine wheel is a center stone. And the center stone is called the creator stone. Um, it represents great spirit. It represents all that is. It is that source energy that comes right in the middle of everything. <coughs> and around the creator stone are seven more stones. These are unusual stones. So around the creator wheel, all of this now represents the cosmos. It represents everything out there. So we have Mother Earth, Father Sky, Grandmother Moon, Grandfather Sun. We have the Wolf Road, which you might know as the Milky Way. Do you guys see the Milky Way here? Yes. You do, okay. <laughs> so we have the Milky Way, we have the Star Nation. <coughs> Oh, <laughs> we're going to get close and personal. No, they can't see now. Can you see? Sort of. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. No, that's okay. How's that? Milky Way. Okay. Now, wait a minute. See, now I lost where I was, and I have to make sure I tell you all seven of those. Oh, the other worlds. That's the one. So one of these represents the other worlds, which are all of the other planets. So we have the star nation, we have all of the cosmos, which includes Mother Earth. So we are part of everything that is. And when we're done here, I'll label all of this if you want to go through and, you know, if you're interested in all of that. 
Um, <clears throat> and then once we, you know, once we focus on these here in the middle, then we go, I have to do this because I'm right-handed, then we have the east stone is here, south, west, and north. And so now you can start to see we're going to form a wheel. And then within each spoke, there's four. And I'm going to do this fast so I can really talk about it all. There's four that come here. Inward, always moving in towards Creator, and Creator sends energy out. <clears throat> and then from the east, and the south to the west, and the west to the north, and the north back. That's our 36 stones. And it seems really complicated, but actually it's not. Once we have this in the center, this source energy, remember, in all of the cosmos, everything starts in the east. So this east stone is our point of beginning. It's the place of the new day, the sunrise. But the east is also brings in energies that goes all the way into Creator and back out. So this first one is air. It is the air that we breathe. It is, you know, this that we swim in, you know, that gives us life. We have air, and then we have illumination, and then we have clarity, and then we have wisdom. And so from the East, th this is what we call the medicine of the East. So <clears throat> as, we, as we stand on the point on the medicine wheel, you know, okay, sorry, I'm going to step away from that because I am so not a flow chart kind of person. <laughs> So the East is that place where we start everything. It's also the place of our mind, our mental body. So all of those stones that move in have to do with our thoughts, illumination, you know, that brand new idea that we get. And then the next stone that goes in is about clarity. So we have that idea and then we gain clarity about the idea and then we gain wisdom. So we move in and the closer we get to Creator, the stronger that energy gets. And then Creator gives it back to us, back through the East. And then when we take those thoughts that we had on the east and we move around the medicine wheel to the south. The south is the place of our emotional body. So we have our thoughts and then we move to our emotions. Because once we have that thought, that new idea, it's our emotions that, that really push it down into us, that really embed it and plant that seed in us. Are we excited about the idea? Are we fearful about the idea? You know, do we think it's great? Is it not so great? You know, all of these things we start to feel in the South. But when we move in from the South, in here, now we come to Earth. And then we have love and trust and growth. So if you think about how that works, moving in from that emotional place, when we come to that place of love and trust, then we grow. So the South is also the place of our childhood. You know, I always say, who better to show you what emotions are than a child? You know, have you ever seen a three-year-old throw a temper tantrum? And like usually I see it in the grocery store when they want the, the candy bar or something and they're throwing that temper tantrum and then they get the candy bar and then joy. I mean, such a big switch from emotions, you know, from anger and frustration straight into joy. And, you know, the teachings on the medicine wheel tell us exactly that, that there is no wrong emotion. There is no emotion that is better than or less than another one. You know, Great Spirit gives us our emotions for our lessons, for our teachings. So if we try to avoid anger or sorrow or grief or even fear, we don't learn from it. We don't, you know, we can't learn if we don't stay in it long enough to understand it. But the difference is, and when it gets to be damaging to us, is when we wallow in that, you know, like, and we stay angry forever and ever and ever, instead of just learning what we need to learn and move through it. And once we move through it, then we can get to those emotions that we consider as humans, we call them great emotions, like happiness and joy and love and serenity and peace and all of those that we want. But the truth is, and this is part of the teachings of the medicine wheel, the truth is, is that we can't feel that love and joy and elation unless we allow ourselves to feel the fear and the sadness and the grief and even the doubt. And to the depths that we allow ourselves to feel this, we can reach the heights of those things that we call good.
So you have to have balance. If you only allow yourself to go so deep and, and not barely understanding your, your grief or your sorrow, you can't come way up here. You can only come just a little bit up. So the medicine wheel teaches us that balance, that they're all good. And so learning those emotions and then moving through the trust and the love takes us into that growth. And so when we go from this up to the west, up here, this is our physical. This is our physical body. And, and most people stop just with the physical body and say, this is where we heal. This is our healing place. But it's about the physical and it's about manifestation. So it's also about not only your physical body, but where you are physically in the world, where you are in the planet. Because there's no accident where you are. You know, your placement here, as we say, is powerful and meaningful, and you are exactly where you need to be. And if spirit sees to move you somewhere else, then you go there and you find your placement there, and you find your manifestation in that place. And so this is that West, so not only the healing of the body and the acknowledgement that we live in these vessels that carry us, but also where we are. And so as we move in here, the first one is fire. You know, you notice that the elements are always first, you know, air, earth, fire. And then the next three coming in are introspection, the first one, going within. The next one is um, our dreams. You know, our dreams, and not just the dreams that we have at night, but our dreams, what we dream for ourselves, what we want to create. Because remember, this is the direction of manifestation. So we have to be able to go within to know what it is that we want to create, dream about it, you know, dream on it. And then um, once we go from our dreams, then we go to our experiences. And our experiences are that reality that we can touch. So all of that comes in from the West, and when we pull this in again, remember, Creator is always pulsing back out to us and giving us these gifts and this clarity that comes back. And then when we come around here to the North, this is the place of our spiritual body. So there's four, you know, so many times it's always emotional, physical, and mental. We often forget the spiritual piece, or sometimes we leave off the emotional piece. But when we come around to complete the medicine wheel in the north, it's the place of the spi our spiritual body. And so this first one here is water, the element of water. And then we have um, cleansing and renewal and purity. And so all of that comes back into Creator. So, you know, it seems like, okay, yeah, that's a lot of stuff, right? But let's just take an example. Um, let's say you're um, offered a new job. Somebody's offered a new job. So that new beginning, we're on the east. At any point in our lives, we can be anywhere on the medicine wheel with any issue, with anything that we're experiencing. So we start in the East, we got offered a new job. So we're thinking about it. Okay, what do I think about this? Is this good? Is this bad? Do I want this? You know, and all of this starts coming in where we gain more clarity about it. We gain our wisdom about it. We have illumination that comes in. And so when we feel solid in our thoughts about that new job, then we start feeling into it. Is this going to be a challenge? Is this going to be exciting? Is this going to be scary? Am I up to it? You know, all of those emotions start coming into it. And then, once we have worked through all of those emotions, then we're in the physical. Now we're sitting in the office, or, you know, whatever job we have. Now we're sitting in that place of work. We're in the physical with it. So we have to go within and find within ourselves what it takes to do this job, what it takes to create it. How do we manifest it? Do we dream about it? Is this what we dreamed for ourselves? You know, all of this comes in. And then once we're settled in this, and we may be in this place, say with a new job for, I don't know, 10 years, five years, 30 years, you know, who knows, right? And we stay in this place. And then when we're ready, we take it into spirit. And now, what do we give back to the world? What does spirit, how does spirit move through us for that clearing, that renewal? You know, do we give something back to people through our job? Do we give something back to creator? Are we fed through our, you know, our own spirit? Is it being fed through this? So any situation that we have, we move around the medicine wheel. And you can't go from thinking about it to doing it. 
If you skip the feeling, if you skip really stepping into that feeling of anything, you're going to miss it. And this is not going to work. It's not going to manifest for you. What you want to create and what you want for your life, if you don't put your feeling into it, that's where your energy comes in, right? That feeling. So you have to put your feeling into it to take it into the physical plane. So, phew, that's a lot. And you know, you can think about that new relationship, um, giving birth to a child. You start in the East. <laughs> you know, the East is the place of infancy. You know, it's infancy, childhood, adulthood, and our elders here. And it goes on and on and on. I mean, this is such a simple version of this. But I've been working with the medicine wheel for 16 years. I live this, and I still feel like I know just barely enough to be in it, you know, to kind of hang on to it. And I want to go ahead and tell you what these other stones are so you'll see how all of this ties into creation. So, this first stone here is the rooted beings, the plant people. We call them the plant tribe. You guys are like the plant tribe. But these are the rooted beings. This is the earth walkers. So these are the two-leggeds and the four-leggeds are represented here. Then we have the stone beings. So all of the stones and the mountains from the smallest little pebble up to the, you know, the largest boulder or mountain is represented here. And then this is our ancestors. This is where our ancestors come through on the medicine wheel to work with us. And then we come up here and we have the rainbow spirits. So those are all the divas and the fairies and the little people. You know, every tribe has a legend of some little people. Not only every Native American tribe, but a lot of people do, right? There's leprechauns and, you know, it goes on and on. So the rainbow spirits. And then here we have the water beings. All of those that live in the water. And then when we come around here, we have the earth crawlers. So all of the little bugs and the little creepy crawlies, they're all here. And then this is the winged ones, the ones that fly. So all of creation is represented here. So, what does that mean? <laughs> um, some people work with a medicine wheel, will create a medicine wheel out of stones, just like this, to represent all of this, and they meditate with it. They walk around the wheel. Sometimes they'll sit here, sometimes they'll sit here, sometimes they'll wait and see what stone calls to them. But when a medicine wheel is created, it's not just putting the stones down. It's act we have to activate it. We have to call in these directions. We call them the grandmothers and grandfathers. These are the spirit beings, the guardians of the directions. And once we create this wheel on the ground and then we call in all of these beings to come and be guardians and to teach us the lessons and to give us the teachings in it, this becomes so much more than this, what you're seeing on this piece of paper and it's so much more than just the stones on the earth it becomes like a living breathing being and for those of you who dance the fire dance you danced inside of a medicine wheel this weekend and that arbor as we call it held you and kept you safe so it becomes something that you actually interact with not something that you stand in front of you interact with it and when this is activated when all of these energies are brought into this and, you know, some people can actually feel it just vibrate. But it's not this flat thing that's sitting on top of the earth. Because here we have Mother Earth and we have the cosmos. So what looks like on the flat surface becomes a sphere and it dips down into the earth and up into the cosmos. So we have this whole big, it's not two dimensional, you know, it's not flat. You can step into it, you can feel it, you can interact with it you can ask for clarity. The information will come. It is absolutely amazing. So I have to tell you a story. Um, the first time that I was, told, I was told I needed to build a medicine wheel and in order to work with the medicine wheel I was told I needed to build my own personal wheel. So I got 36 stones. They weren't very big, about yay big, you know, about like this. And I went down in the woods on the land where I was living and I found this perfect place under this big, huge oak tree. I mean, the tree was so big you couldn't get your arms around it. And I always called her my grandmother tree. And I felt safe there. So I got my stones and I, you know, I intuited where, what goes where. And, you know, I was so proud of myself. I'm making my medicine wheel. You know, this is awesome. And so I sat, then I sat there with it. <laughs> and I'm just sitting with it. I thought, okay, something's going to happen, right? What's going to happen with this? Anyway,
anyway, I sat with it and I sat with it and I think I may have zoned out, you know, and then all of a sudden, one of the stones started moving. And I got so excited, I was like, oh my God, it's happening, you know. I was just, I was over the moon. And so the stones started moving. Now, when we work with the medicine wheel in North America, we always work in our sunwise direction, right? Which is sun rises in the east, it moves through the southern sky, and it sets in the west. I know you guys are different down here, right? <laughs> but this is the teaching that we have. And so when we work with the medicine wheel, we always work in what we call the sunwise direction. So if I'm sitting in the east and there's the south, you know, and then the west is across from me and the north is here. So I was so excited because somewhere over here, one of the stones started moving. I thought, this is fantastic. And then suddenly this stone started moving. And then this stone, I was like, it's going backwards. Well, oh, this must be a big message. You know, this is going to be something <laughs> really big because it's moving opposite of the way it's supposed to move. <laughs> And I sat there and I watched it and then maybe that stone moved and then that one. And, it, you know, eventually probably about 18 of the stones on the wheel moved. And I kept thinking, this is fucking awesome, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then after I sat there watching this for about 30 minutes, thinking that I was like the most magical person on the planet, right about here, a mole popped up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Right, and I was like, oh wow, that's a huge lesson for me, right? Yeah, don't get so smart about it, right? Yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, so, the lesson for me was, was to stay with it and don't have these great big expectations about what I'm going to experience. And I did. I, I went every day and I sat with the medicine wheel. And I was amazed at the insights that would come. I was amazed at the connection. I mean, truly, even a heart connection. I loved this wheel. And I loved every stone on it. And I knew where every stone came from. And I gained so much experience from sitting with this. And then finally, Finally, one of my teachers told me that I was ready to hold medicine wheel ceremonies. So it was actually the first ceremony that I ever held. And I built a huge wheel. It was about as big as half of this room with 36 stones and I cleared the land and you know the stones were now huge like this. And I worked with that large medicine wheel that was a gift to the people um, for about three years. I sat with it. Every week, people would come, they would leave gifts, they would leave photographs, you know, photographs of an ancestor would be there, or a necklace would go there in honor of the rooted beings. You know, people would come and interact with it in ways that I never could have imagined. And it was amazing to me because I knew my connection to it, but it really, I was surprised that other people felt the same kind of connection to this. Because people who don't really understand the medicine wheel look at it and just think, well, that's just a bunch of stones, you know, kind of laid out. And... But truly, people were actually connecting to it and feeling it. And the prayers that went into those ceremonies and the people who walked, just walking around the wheel, and they would be guided to stop in one place and offer their prayers or offer their gift. It was an amazing experience. And that was in, well, gosh, that was... that big medicine wheel was created in 2006. So I've been working with that energy for 10 years now, solid. And all of the other teachings that I've learned of the medicine work that I do are based on this medicine wheel because everything is here. And so connecting into this and working with it, true, I mean truly it's changed my life in ways that I couldn't imagine. And you know, most people kind of go, well, yeah, it's just a pile of rocks. But, you know, I wonder what they said about Stonehenge. You know, if people who didn't understand were just kind of like, yeah, that's just a bunch of rocks over there. You know, but the people who really understood it and connected to it, it was part of their lives. I mean, it truly was who they are. And Adam's calendar to put up, you know, to go through that and create something like that, it had to be just so important to the people who were with it. So my feeling is, is that, you know, if all these different cultures and all these different places have something so similar, there's truth in it. There must be truth in it. Because I'm sure that whoever built Adam's calendar never met a Native American Haudenosaunee Indian, you know, up in New York. So 
there must be truth. We're all connected. And that tells me that what this teaches about the cosmos, what this teaches about our ancestors, what this teaches about who we are and how we live our lives is true for all of us. Because so many of us and so many of our ancestors who never could have connected to each other know this truth. And it's being lost. You know, it's being lost. And so many of us are teaching this again and showing this and sharing it. And it's absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, you guys get the 45 minute version here and I've got 10 years in it. And I still sometimes just sit with this and feel the energy and feel those spirit guides that come in through these directions and the teachings that come in and I just sit and cry. It is so deeply moving. I encourage you, if you feel guided to, to make your own medicine wheel. To make your own medicine wheel and sit with it. And if you want the diagram of this and the instructions and the labels of all of this, just send me a message and I'll send it to you. I couldn't print them off. You know, I'm a little bit limited <laughs> with what I can do here. Um, but I'm happy to send it to you. And I think that you will start to gain clarity and wisdom from the East and you'll feel that trust and love that comes from the South. And then you'll connect into your own experiences and your dreams will become reality in the West. And then you'll connect into spirit here in the North. And it is the most amazing thing, the most amazing thing. Um, I do want to share with you, I promised you that I would bring this back around to plant people. So, um, there is a book that I had years ago, it was one of the first books that I actually got about the medicine wheel, um, and I want to share that with you. The name of it is The Medicine Wheel Garden, Creating Sacred Space for Healing, Celebration, and Tranquility. And I highly recommend that. If you want to connect to these energies, you know, this book will talk about all of this and the quadrants and what gets planted, which herbs, which plants are focused on which direction and which ones will grow best in which direction. Because remember, you're always going to be facing east here. And it talks about the different zones. Now, it does talk about it's North American, but I think that you guys can probably translate that down here, you know, whether it's mountainous or desert or wherever you are. Um, but it also talks, it gives an, I wrote all this down because I wanted to make sure I told you this correctly. Um, it gives you the guide for the zones, but it also has an illustrated encyclopedia of the 50 key herbs with propagation needs, traditional and modern uses, and all the cautions that you need to know about those herbs. Um, it's got recipes for teas and tonics and soaps and creams and all of those things. It's also got ideas um, for how to create sacred um, items from the books, the tinctures, the things like that that you can use. Um, prayer ties, spirit shields you can make with the plants. And then it also gives you some different rituals and things that you can do. But if your way to connect into creation is through the rooted beings, the first one on the medicine wheel, then connect in with the rooted beings and create a medicine garden a medicine wheel garden, not just the stones. Because I think that the medicine wheel garden will probably speak to you all in a different way than it would to people who don't work with the plant medicines like you do, that don't work with the rooted beings like you do. So for me, um, because I don't work with the plant medicines, I work with the stones. I'm much more connected to the stone beings, to the earth, we call it dirt, to the earth, to the soil. Um, and to the stones and that's the way that I connect in. So, you know, see what fits for you and if you want the instructions that I use for the Haudenosaunee wheel for this one, I'm happy to share them with you. If you want to use what's in the book about the medicine wheel garden, use that. And if all you want to do is put the center stone in just the east, the south, the west, and the north and start there, then just start there because all of this will start to fall into place whether you have a stone, whether you recognize it or not. It's just how this wheel works. It's absolutely amazing. So that was a whole lot. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on this or any other questions that I might be able to answer? Yes. Should we swap the north and the south around? No, you would just move in this direction. 
you would go in in um, Native American culture this would be called moon wise this would be the feminine energy because the moon is feminine this is sun wise or the masculine energy so your moon wise would be to the south and your sun wise would be to the north so you would just keep it the same you would just move around the wheel in the different direction yeah good question yes Yes, and you know, she was asking about the animals and the different animals in the different directions. And the different directions do have animals that correspond with that, but it depends on the tribe and where you live, you know, where the tribe is located. This one, this wheel that I work with, has the butterfly in the east, and the butterfly is transformation. That's that illumination, those new ideas. And then in the south, it's the turtle. Remember, this is the south, is the direction where the earth is recognized in turtle we call North America Turtle Island so the south holds the turtle and then the west on almost every medicine wheel in North America is the bear it's introspection going within going into that hibernation place so the bear is here and then on this medicine wheel um, the eagle is in the north and the eagle is that connection to spirit so you know some other tribes like in the Plains Indians they would have buffalo maybe here on the north and eagle might be in the south or it might be reversed so it depends on the animals that you have you know the the original Cherokee medicine wheel had the buffalo on it and then the buffalo were driven out of the east where we live and they're primarily in the west so over time buffalo was no longer on the Cherokee medicine wheel you know there was a different animal that came in so you know it depends on migration patterns you know what animals are around you know, in, um, in Peruvian shamanism, in the Peruvian medicine wheel, you'll find the jaguar and the condor, you know, different animals. So I hope that answered your question. It was, it was kind of like when animals come from different directions, like any animals, like say you're sitting in the forest, yes. and suddenly you see an, an eagle flying above you from, from coming from the north. Yeah. Like how, so, how yeah, that's you kind of calculate that in your head according to the medicine wheel? Yes. So like, okay, uh, yeah, <laughs> she's, she's looking down at her medicine wheel. So, no, it's a good point. It's a good point. So let's, I won't use eagle in the north because that's where eagle is on this medicine wheel. But let's say you're sitting in a field and a horse comes in and the horse is coming in, you know, approaching you from the south, right? And so it's coming from the south. So horse medicine is about personal power. It's about your power. So now it's coming from the south about your emotions, trust, and love. So how does that message of personal power and trust and love play into maybe what you're seeking or what you're asking about? Or what is that message that the horse is bringing you? Trust your own power, you know, love yourself. Or So you look at what the medicine of the animal is and then what the medicine of the direction is. Yeah, and then you can start to kind of decipher yeah, your own interpretation. Animal Speak. Animal Speak. Animal Speak is a great book. Thank you. Animal Speak is a great book by Ted Andrews if you're interested in the animals and how they work with this. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. What type of stones do you use? Uh, that's a great question. Um, when I create a medicine wheel, I prefer to use the stones that come from the land where I'm creating it. Um, so I try to collect the stones, you know, basically locally. Um, but over time, when I start working with them, sometimes another stone will come and join one. Like maybe I'm gifted a big crystal and I feel, you know, where it's supposed to go. And sometimes it gets replaced, you know, sometimes, you know, stones move and change. But, you know, you can create a medicine wheel. You know, there's the big thing now about creating crystal grids. Are y'all all familiar with that? They're just medicine wheels. <laughs> They're just medicine wheels. <laughs> So, you know, we give metaphysics and, you know, new age stuff gives a whole lot of new names to old stuff like earthing. Really? Now we have a name for it? Just walk barefoot, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, you can use your crystals. I mean, when I, back in the day when I had a, a business and a, and a office job as an interior designer, believe it or not, um, I had a medicine wheel that sat on my desk. And I arranged my office so that I was always sitting on the medicine wheel somewhere in here, you know. 
Yeah, it just sat on my desk. It was small. It was just little stones, and I used it on my desk. And I would move that medicine wheel, depending on, like, if I was meeting with a vendor, you know, who's going to be really tough, or if I was meeting with a client, you know, and I want them to understand me. I'm going to let them sit in the east, you know. I did all kinds of stuff like that. I had so much fun, you know, learning this. But you can create a medicine wheel as small as sitting on a tabletop, as long as you can move around it. You know, and it's, and it's just so fascinating because you create the medicine wheel, you know, and you know, one minute you're standing in the east, and then if you just move over here, then you're in the west, and it's going to feel completely different. And it doesn't have to be huge. That first one I created was three feet across, a meter across. That was it, the one that the mole decided to, you know, give me a good lesson in. <laughs> so, yeah, so use crystals, use whatever you're connected to. The first medicine wheel I ever experienced was um, with a Peruvian shaman, and the cardinal directions um, were held by the um, knee bones of monks that had been carved into skulls. So, I know. Wow. <laughs> I know, it was pretty intense. <laughs> I mean, no wonder I got hooked, right? It was like, holy moly, yeah. So, yeah, so you can use whatever you want. I've got one um, that I use. I keep it in a big basket because I take it for teachings. And I use a big turtle shell in the south to represent the turtle. And I've got a pine cone that comes in in some other place. So, yeah, just, you know, whatever you feel called to use. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor, and once you activate it, it becomes something. Yeah. Yes? My question basically goes to where did the intuition come from when the first people created this world? I mean, was that. I would started? love to know that. <gasps> Truly, because, you know. Was that a, through a dream? Just you know, my, my, I can only speculate at that and I can only guess at that and my guess would be through a vision because I believe that visions, we can have shared visions and somebody from, you know, South Africa can have a vision and then somebody in North America can have a vision and they're the same. Because I believe that spirit is going to manifest what spirit wants to manifest and spirit is going to find that vessel and is going to find that channel. And if one channel is, you know, clogged up, Spirit's going to move to the next channel. So absolutely, I believe it probably came inspired vision through spirit. You know, get working on this. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Can I yeah. share something? Um, yeah. I always had a question about why do the different tribes put different things in different places on the wheel? Mm. And then someone explained to me, it depends on your standing place. Mm -hmm. If I stand in Africa and I look south, I see the ocean. Mm -hmm. And... That is, yes. if you look east, you see the sunrise. It depends on your standing place yes. of where you're going to be mm. placing this. Yes. Um, can we maybe have two more questions? Because Robbie has got something really important that oh, she would like yes. to share with us. So Sorry, I don't even know what time it is. Two more questions, and then I would really like Robbie to, to share what yes. your message with Thank us. You. Okay. Yes. Robbie, I, I was quite surprised when I Googled it to see that New Age people refer to the wheel as individual development, but the indigenous tribes, it's all about community. So Always. Uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yes. You talk about using it as a developmental tool. Mm. Um, so how did that transition come about? Because obviously the, what I find fascinating is if you look at them from an aerial view, it looks like a upside down or like a little, a little wheel. Okay? It's yes. On its side, yes. But some of them have doors. Yes. Where does that come in? Where does that fit into this? You know, yeah, yeah and, I, and I think I understand your question. I mean, the medicine wheel, because, you know, because the Native Americans, and I'm just going to speak to this medicine wheel, I can't speak to the others around the world, but because the Native Americans lived in such close community, everything was communal. Everything was communal. And so the teachings of the wheel would have been with the community. You know, there probably would have been, um, the medicine person would have created the wheel somewhere close to the village that was for the use of all of the people. And so, you know, seeking advice, seeking counsel. You know, so it is individual. It is individual because you can go seeking for yourself, but you can also go and ask, you know, ask and set your intentions, set your prayers for the community, for the tribe. So, you know, there was a bit of both, but, you know, everything was so community oriented. 
um, there wasn't the thought of individual because when one member of the community you know, was held up or, you know, rose up, then the whole tribe did. You know, there was no higher than or less than. Um, so it was all about lifting everyone up. So when one person, you know, aspires to something new, then the whole community, the whole tribe would come up. So it is, it's a bit about both. It's actually a nice analogy because if you think about it as shaman, guide you through a process, but it's a personal journey. Yes. But at the end of the day, he will send packs for you if you, if you desire. Yes. If you need a, so maybe with a community spirit, it's actually very interesting. Yes. We have kept a cohesiveness. Yes. And the doors, what was the meaning of the doors? Well, there, the doors, you know, yeah, there's uh, so much, and we could probably talk about this for a very long time. Um, some wheels, they would have doors like in the east where you can walk in and come out. Most wheels you would just walk all the way around and you don't step into it. Also depending on the size of it. And sometimes they would refer to the doors as the pathways where the sun would illuminate and come in and they would call that a door. Isn't that what they found in Stonehenge? I think so. You know that it was it was based on you know equinox and you know so it's all just complete so balance with that. Doors, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Is there any more? Okay. Mm -hmm.